Does AA specking matter? In short, no. But kinda yes? Sorta. Well, what the heck does that mean? So, you've got three types, theoretically, that you could AA spec, assuming we're not talking about, like, fighters and stuff on carriers. There's destroyers, there's cruisers, and then there's battleships. If we look at what the uh, commander build gives you, destroyers really don't have a lot that they can spec. They can get plus 10% from BFT. They can get, well, up to plus 20% technically from Adrenaline Rush, but that's kind of like, yeah. Because, I mean, if you're getting your ass kicked and you got AA mounts that are breaking, are you really getting more? <laughs> because you might be losing some at the same time. Um, and then technically there's this, like, plus one flak skill, which we're going to do a three question mark on that because, eh, <laughs> I don't know if anybody actually takes it for the flak. But uh, realistically, it's to help you be an open water gunboat. And if you're open water gunboating, you might attract the attention of a CV. So, hey, you get an extra flak buff. Cruisers, on the other hand, get something pretty kicking. They get a flat pl tw plus 20%. Oh my god. Um, I haven't been looking and a whole bunch of people have donated. Uh, I'm gonna keep doing this, but thank you very much, and I will look at all the stuff that's happening with me not looking at it right now. <laughs> um, okay, so, cruisers, plus 20%, that's just a flat thing. That's gonna be to the continuous and to the flak, and also there's this plus 25% to priority sector which also gives a plus one flak. Now, this one's weird, um, and I might actually do something in the game to show it to you, but uh, suffice it to say, 25% of your base AA moves over to one side, so it is actually a plus 25% buff, and you get a flak buff, and it's only two, uh, two points, which is also nice. And again, if you get Adrenaline Rush, then there's that AR, you know, plus 20% AR kind of thing. So we're gonna, first off, we're going over, you know, the possibilities. And we'll put some question marks, because again, you know, if you're getting shot, you might be losing some mounts, so yeah. Uh, battleships, I'll be honest, I don't actually remember off the top of my head, so we can look at the mighty Mikasa and uh, see if this is gonna tell us anything. So it's a plus 10. And I think, yes there is, there's another, there's that, and I don't believe any of these other things do anything for AA at all. So we're gonna assume it's that and the Adrenaline Rush skill. So, uh, there's a plus 10% for two points, and then there's the plus 25% priority sector with plus one flak, and then the plus 20% AR, again, with the double question mark because maybe you lose the stuff. Eh. All right. If you're putting points into this, you're not putting points into something else. You're not putting points into maybe survivability. You're not putting points into maybe maneuverability. You're not putting points into some kind of offensive weapon, being guns or torps. You're not putting points into something that gives you intelligence, maybe RPF, radio position finder, whatever. Um, this is just the normal process of if you want something you're going to give something else for it and the point was made to me today well you may not see cvs all the time but you'll definitely see surface ships so if you spec into a surface ship build isn't it better to shoot the thing that's shooting you as opposed to maybe killing one additional plane um because if you kill one additional plane they still get through they still shoot you you still take damage did you change anything so one thing to look at is if there's a skill that gives you plus 10% damage, what are you gaining against a surface ship? So if a surface ship, say, say has 60,000 health, that means that you know, you're gonna do your 60,000 damage over two, three, four, five minutes, whatever, however it is that you guys are battling it out. And with the additional 10%, means you're gonna do it 10% faster, or maybe a little faster than that, because that 10% faster might also deny a heal. Might, maybe. So, all in all, if you're gonna brawl this dude for two, three, four minutes, 
you're going to take a lot of damage during that time. And this 10%, again, it might negate a heal, might burn him down a little faster, but you're still taking damage. But it's getting you toward a place where you're not taking damage from this faster. Okay. Does that translate to planes? That's where the kind of yes, but kind of no, but kind of yes. So I'm going to give you an example that I used when I was trying to talk to my clan mates uh, back in, in uh, Season 9 clan battles. So we had, in this case, two Stalingrads where these two Stalins would be working together, and this was actually a fairly normal thing across a variety of different comps. They weren't necessarily on top of each other, but they were pretty darn close, and as one got hurt, they'd back up, the other one would move forward, take aggro, and then they'd swap positions, and yada yada, they'd do the thing. Well, that year, that clan battle season, I'll say, the Hikuryu was really popular. And the Hikuryu had dive bombers. So if we look in the client real quick, preferably where I actually get to see carriers and stuff, we can look at what the Hikuryu actually has. So Hikuryu dive bombers, you have, I believe it's 20. If we had the flight control mod, there would be 20 here. So we could say that you start with 20 dive bombers. Now the dive bombers were a severe threat against the Stalingrads because they were big enough that you could consistently hit two to three citadels over and over and over again. It's not to say it happens every time, but it was consistent. And if you got three citadels into a Stalingrad, that was 25-5. That was 25,500 damage, which was a hell of a kick to the nuts. So in order to do this, you need three planes to get through the AA to make the drop. All right. Well, I have preached in other videos, how many planes does a single ship kill? Well, it turns out with a Stalingrad, it's about three planes and three planes, which what does that mean? That equals six are going to die per attack. You can come in with the Hikuryu having 12 planes. Pre-drop, go ahead and run three down so that you're coming in with a wave of nine so that you have less resources at risk. You come in, you dodge flak, you do all the stuff you have to do, you come in, you drop, and you bail. Sometimes you get three planes packed, sometimes you get two. All right, so you've lost six. 20, so we'll have a running tally. We'll have 20 bombers minus six, brings you down to 14. You come in with nine again. All right, cool, you do the thing, wham. You hit for another, say, 25,000, maybe it's, maybe only get two citadels that time, because it wasn't so consistent as to be an every time thing. You just put the reticle on the target and you pray. But maybe you get a 16 or something. All right, another six planes have gone down. That's gonna take you down to eight. All right, you, maybe you've regened one, two, maybe three planes, so we can kick this up to 10. And that means you get to come in with nine one more time, lose six, and then you're down to four. And four has no way in on two Stalingrads. Now, if you hit the one Stalin, and then you hit him again, and then you hit him again, 25-5, 25-5, 25-5, plus shell fire from your teammates, this Stalin might go down. That could absolutely happen. Didn't always happen, but it could. Could absolutely be a factor. So let's look at this a little differently and kind of back up a bit. So in clan battles, Stalingrads are typically gonna take either like a range mod or a reload mod. They're gonna shoot a little faster, they're gonna shoot a little farther. And Stalingrads in that clan battle season were used as kind of pocket battleships. They have really strong shells, they're really accurate, they're nice and flat and have huge amounts of pen, they can rip people apart at a good distance. And it was either carrier or battleship. So a lot of people pick carriers, which means you don't have battleships. So, hey, look, the Stalin fills the hole. What happens if you add plus 15%? Maybe with the slot six mod, we'll say. Or we could pretend if it was now, you pick the plus 20% here. So we'll do that. We'll pick plus 20%. And we'll use a, a little concise color, say. And I'll circle this to say, hey, we took this. I'm not going to go through and be really crazy about this. I'm just going to try and keep it simple. Plus 20% of three planes, 0.6 planes. 
Okay, plus 20% over here, 0.6 planes. Well, is it actually more than that? I'm sorry, because my mind's like failing on this one, but no, it is 0.6. So altogether, that's gonna add an additional minus two. So it's gonna be minus six off the, off the basic, working together, and then minus 1.2. So in total, 7.2 planes. The 0.2, man, it's a little damaged. Does it matter? Kinda yes. So you're coming in with your bombers. Can you bring nine bombers now? If you bring in nine, and you lose seven, you only get to drop two bombs. Did you want to lose seven planes to only be able to get 16,000 damage? No. Okay. So now you're bringing in 12 planes. All right. You lose your seven, you come in, you still have five. So your five come in, they drop, boom. They do the thing, the three planes leave. And the remaining two planes you have, you recall, one of which is damaged, one of which dies. It's actually minus eight. So now you've gone from 20 bombers down to 12. Okay, so you're gonna come in, you're gonna make your second run. You're gonna bring in 12 bombers. You're gonna come in, you're gonna lose seven. One of them's gonna be a little more than wounded. You're gonna drop, you're gonna do your 25-5 because you're badass, bam, bam, this dude's been hit. It's not enough to kill a Stalin, he's healing, the other guy's trying to help him, whatever. And then after you recall, you're actually gonna lose one more. And now you're down to four. Well, maybe in this time you've regen two. Cool, so you're up to six. Six can't breach this. Seven can't breach this. In order to breach this, you need 10. So if we look at what the regen rate on this is, I'll even swap it back to flight mod. If we look at what the regen rate on this is, 69 seconds. So 70 seconds to get four planes. It's gonna be about four and a half, maybe five minutes, give or take. All right, so four minutes later, maybe five minutes later, you get back up to 10 planes, and assuming these guys are still together, you're gonna come in, you're gonna drop, you're gonna lose eight planes. You might get the kill, which would be cool. But now you're down to two bombers that are gonna have to regen enough to be able to breach through. This is one skill that altered this, so two, three drops became two off of one skill on two different ships. In this case, the plus 20% would have been a four-point talent uh, under the current commander rework system, or if they could guarantee that the priority sector was going to be on, on target with the bombers, they could instead spend two points and go with this. And Adrenaline Rush didn't boost continuous damage back then, so theoretically as they got hurt, as long as the AA mounts were still intact or relatively intact, Maybe that would give them a boost, but let's just pretend that as mounts break, this kind of pushes it back up a little bit. So really, it comes down to one, one skill here prevents, completely prevents, the ability to come in with a bomb drop until X amount of minutes pass. And then once they do, you are stuck for 5, 8, 10 minutes. So if you start at minute 20, you bomb, you bomb again, you wait 5 minutes... You come back, you bomb, and then you wait eight. You're all the way down to four minutes remaining in the match before you can even field a group of bombers that has some kind of threat to it because you have enough bombers to be able to absorb the damage. This is where the AA specking can turn the difference, even though it's a single plane. It doesn't feel like it's a lot, but it does matter. The question comes in to stopping one triple citadel equate to having 10% more damage onto a surface ship. Or in this case, I think it's actually 13. I'm just gonna double check because I don't remember off the top of my head. And I look real quick. Give me something that's got, got gun reload. 13, right? 12, okay, 12. So in this case, it would be 12% from two different ships. So is the damage of this going to be worth 25.5 citadel damage against another ship. Might be. Might be worth the help trade. You take the extra damage, but you deal the extra damage. That's a calculation that you're going to have to make. Uh, outside of this, uh, the only thing I can uh, recommend in the does AA specking matter, I've kind of covered in another video, which is going to be multiplicative math. Which sounds really scary, but it's not. Basically, 
the multiplication of your base values plus the priority sector value plus defensive value plus this talent plus this talent plus yada 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 makes a ship go from 100% base AA potentially to over 300% of what its normal ship is. And so the multiplicative math, uh, when you just add even these two skills, you've almost added like 70% of another ship, 70 to 80% of a second ship that doesn't have to be next to you that you're now outputting because you dropped six points into this. Um, for, for destroyers, obviously it's gonna be much less. It's just a 10% increase, this weird adrenaline rushy thing, and maybe a bonus flak puff. Uh, so the math is definitely gonna be different there. Mostly it's gonna be coming down to cruisers in terms of like AA defense and trying to screen and stuff. That's where you're gonna be uh, trying to game the system out. 